Android 10. It's finally here. After the Android Q beta was released, I guess Google realized finding a dessert that started with a Q was a little bit too difficult, so they just gave up and stuck with 10. So let's go ahead and jump into the big new features. First up, the new gestures. So if you're in an app and you slide up from the bottom, you go ahead and get to the home screen. If you slide up again, you get your app drawer. This one is the same as it was in Android Pie. Next, while you're in an app, if you slide right or left along the bottom, you get to cycle through your most recently used apps which are open. These two gestures work surprisingly well and feel super smooth. The next gesture takes a little bit of time getting used to. If you slowly swipe from the left or the right, you get this little arrow that brings up the last screen and you're able to be taken back. So in the Photos app, you would normally swipe left or right to see the next picture. But if you go ahead and do it slowly, you get this arrow and it'll bring you back to the previous screen. It essentially works like a back button. This also works in Chrome, bringing up the last web page. I think it was a little bit of a missed opportunity here because when you swipe from the right of the page, it still only goes back. It would have been nice to be able to go forward as well. Next up, we have a new dark theme. There was already a dark theme in Android Pie, but apparently this new one for Android 10 uses true black, meaning that your battery life should last significantly longer. I'm gonna have to put this to the test and report back, but turning it on is pretty simple. Go into your settings, display, dark theme on. And it uses this dark theme throughout much of the operating system, including Google Calendar, Google Now, Gmail, so you really should get some battery savings there. Dark mode is something that I use all the time, especially at night in a dark room, so it's really useful for me. Smart Reply is even smarter in Android 10. Before, whenever someone would send you a text, you would get some suggestions for a quick response that you could just tap. Now if someone puts in an address, you'll also have the option to quickly get directions from Google Maps with a simple click. It really streamlines the process, and it's a nice touch that Google has added. Sound amplifier is another big feature that Google is advertising. Essentially plug in some headphones, open up the app, and what it does is it plays back the sounds that are going on around you in the real world while dialing out the background noise. At first, I didn't understand what the purpose of this was, but this would actually be super useful for someone who is hard of hearing or hearing impaired. You can dial in the settings to your liking and adjust how much background noise you want to be taken out. Now there are two features that I really wanted to test but I didn't get a chance to because they didn't work. The first was live caption. This is supposed to overlay captions on any video being played on the phone, even videos that you've made yourself. You go into accessibility, scroll down, and there should be an option here for caption preferences. Here it is. It's on and you can go ahead and change some of the settings but no matter what I did, I just could not get this to work. It's supposed to work even without Wi-Fi or cell reception, so I'll have to test this later. The next is focus mode. In the digital well-being app, there's supposed to be a focus mode under ways to disconnect over here. This essentially allows you to snooze certain apps which are giving you too many notifications and distracting you so you can get some real work done. I tried uninstalling and reinstalling this app but I just could not get this to show up or get this to work. I'm not really sure what's going on here, but I hope that these issues get fixed soon. There are also a ton of other smaller changes in Android 10, which I didn't go through. For example, your cell reception icon up here is a little bit different than before. When you hold the power button down, you now have this emergency button that shows up, and I'm sure there's many other things which I'll find with time. One of my big issues with Android Pie was that it was a little too aggressive when it was closing out background apps which were open. This probably has to do with only the four gigabytes of RAM available along with the software, but it was so aggressive that it would get annoying at times. I really hope that Android 10 is better optimized in this regard, but I'm going to have to spend some more serious time with this new software and test it out. Remember, Bite that subscribe button on the bottom right if you want to see more videos, leave a comment below, and hit that like button if you enjoyed. See you next time.